Okay, there are a couple ways to define exponential functions. The definition I'm going to use is that an exponential function looks like this. So we have some number c times some number a raised to the x power. Okay, so you see that in an exponential function, the variable or the input is actually the exponent. Okay, we have a couple of restrictions. One is that the base must be positive. Okay, that's because I want to be able to have a domain of all real numbers. And, for example, if I let x be 1 half and I let a be negative 1, then I have negative 1 to the 1 half, which is the square root of negative 1, and that's undefined over the reals. Okay, so we want a to be greater than 0. We want a to not be 1, so we don't have like 1 squared, and then 1 cubed, they're both 1. And then we require c to be greater than 0. Okay, so some examples of exponential functions are f of x equals 2 times 4 to the x, f of x equals 1 half to the x, or f of x equals 3 times the square root of 2 raised to the x power. So these are all examples of exponential functions. Okay, let me show you how they work. Okay, for the function, f of x equals 2 times 4 to the x, we want to find f of 0. To find f of 0, what we do is we take this number 0 and plug it in for the exponent. So we get 2 times 4 raised to the 0 power. 4 raised to the 0 is 1. So this is 2 times 1, which is 2. Similarly, 4 raised, I'm sorry, f of 1 half is 2 times take 1 half, put it in for x. So 4 to the 1 half. 4 to the 1 half is the square root of 4, and that's 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. So the way exponential functions work is you take the input and you replace the exponent with that input. Okay, fill in the missing y values here for this function, f of x equals 4 times 2 to the x power. Okay, these are the values you should have gotten. So we see that as x gets larger and larger and larger, 2 to the x gets larger and larger and larger, so the function values grow. As x becomes more and more negative, you see that whenever we have a negative exponent, we end up having a fraction. And as x becomes more and more negative, the denominator of that fraction gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So the y value gets closer and closer to 0. Because if you have a fraction and the denominator is much larger than the numerator, it's going to be something close to 0. Let's plot these points here so we can see what the graph of, four times two, of, of f of x equals 4 times 2 to the x looks like. Okay, so this is what the graph looks like. It starts to grow exponentially, hence the name, as x becomes more and more positive, and it goes towards zero as x becomes more and more negative. Remember that it doesn't ever actually become negative, and that's because, one, that's because 2 raised to any power is never going to give you a negative value. Okay, so we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. Okay, fill in this table of values so we can get the graph of f of x equals one-half to the x. Okay, so these are the values you should have gotten. Okay, let's plot the points and fill in the graph. Okay, so this is the graph. In this case, it grows in the negative infinity direction and goes towards zero in the positive infinity direction. Okay, um, and again, we have a, a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. All right, let me give you the classification of all graphs of exponential functions. Okay, and so in the first case, if the base is greater than 1, the graph of the exponential function is going to look something like this. Okay, it might be stretched, but it's going to look something like this. And the y-s, the y-intercept is equal to c. That's because when x is 0, we have a to the 0 is 1, so we have c times 1, which is c we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. If a is a number between 0 and 1, so a fraction of 1, then the graph looks like this. We just reflect across the, the y-axis. So in this case, again, we have c is the y-intercept, 
but the function tends to zero in the positive infinity x direction, and it tends to infinity in the negative infinity x direction. If a function exhibits this behavior, we call that exponential growth. If a function exhibits the second type of behavior, so it goes to zero as x goes to infinity, we call that exponential decay. Okay, now I want to define something for you called the natural exponential function. The natural exponential function is the function that uses the number e as its base. e is an irrational number called Euler's number, and it's approximately equal to 2.72. As an aside, okay, this isn't necessary, you're going to learn more about this in calculus. e is the number that 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n approaches as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so now let me define the natural exponential function. Okay, so f of x equals e to the x is called the natural exponential function. Okay, so it's natural. We call it the natural exponential function because the exponential function that uses this base e has nice properties that, you, uh, that you'll learn about in calculus. Okay, so it's a nice one to use if you can. Okay, since e is about 2.72 and that's greater than 1, we know that the graph of e to the x is an exponential growth graph. So that right there is the graph of f of x equals e to the x, y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote, and the y-intercept is 1. That's because e raised to the 0 power is about 2.72 raised to the 0 power, and that's equal to 1.